I'm Charlotte. Hi, I'm Leah. Hi, I'm Sam. And together we made our app A Walk in the Park. A Walk in the Park is a social app where you can connect and meet people wanting to go on walks. Inspired by the COVID pandemic, our app allows people to post ads describing the type of walk and person they're looking for. For example, if they have kids, dogs, or just fancy a walk with someone. The first thing we see in our app is the landing page. This includes a brief description of the app as well as login and sign up buttons. Since we're a new user, we'll sign up using our Firebase authentication. Here, we're asked for a username, email, and password. We've made sure that each username is unique, as well as making sure that the inputted emails and passwords are formatted correctly. Next, we will be asked for further information that other users will see when they click on our profile. We'll go ahead and enter our full name, gender, postcode, a short bio, and our date of birth. We've also added restrictions to our app to make sure that the user signing up is 18 or over. We are now redirected to the home page where we can see other people's ads. The ads are sorted by when they were created. At the top, we have the option to filter the ads depending on whether the other user has children or dogs that they'll be bringing on the walk. On the ad cards themselves, we can see the user's username, a picture, a title of the ad, when it was posted, and a description of the type of walk they want to go on. We can also see how many miles away they are from the current logged in user, which we calculated using postcodes IO and some utility functions. To view more information, we can click on the user's name and be taken to their profile. Here we can see their full name, age, location and gender, as well as a bio. We can also see a map with markers that show the parks that are in between our locations which was made possible with the Google Places and Maps APIs. If we scroll to the bottom of the profile, we can also see the ads that they've posted. If we decide we'd like to go on a walk with them, we can send them a message. Our messaging system uses Talk.js to allow our users to send real-time messages to one another. We can also click the message button in our footer to be taken to the inbox where we can see all of our previous chats with other users. Also on our footer is the post ad button. This will take us to a page where we can post an ad ourselves about the type of walk we're looking for. We can also tick whether we'll be bringing a child or a dog with us and once submitted we can see our ad on the home page. The map button in the footer shows us a map of parks near us for if we just fancy a walk on our own. We can also click the profile button which takes us to our own profile. Here we can update our bio and our postcode and log out. I'll now pass you over to Leah who will talk about the backend tech that we used. Thank you Charlotte. So for our backend, we decided to use Firebase as it provides a number of tools to build an app to a good quality. In previous projects, we use things such as Postgres to create databases, then Connects to query the databases, and Express to set up a server. So while Firebase was a new technology to us, we thought it would be worth learning, as it enables you to do all of these things in one. We decided to use Firestore as it organises data into hierarchical data structures, and this was important to our app so we could easily organise both user data and ads data. The ability to query the data sets was also important as our app relies on quickly filtering the ads according to people's preferences for a walking buddy. Firestore enables you to create indexes for querying without the need for any external tech. Another feature we used was Firebase authentication and because our app is intended as a social app, it was vital to make sure that only authorised users could access its main features. Authentication also makes sure that emails and passwords are of the correct format so tied with our additional form validation functions, the app becomes secure. Lastly, we used Firebase Storage to save profile pictures for the users. Due to the social nature of the app, it is important that users have profile pictures, so we linked our app to Firebase Storage such that the file names correspond to a person's username, so the image can be accessed quickly upon load. I will now pass you on to Sam, who will take you through the front end. Thanks, Leah. 
The front end to our Node.js based application was built using a variety of libraries to create an engaging UI. We used React to build the app as it allowed us to make reusable components that rendered our HTML. It also meant we could use reach routes to create routes for our single page application. For our CSS, we decided to use star components as it meant colors and fonts could be easily changed at any point during production. And to add some excitement to the app, we used an SVG animation to create a beautiful loading page and logo. We also incorporated a lot of new tech. For the messaging in our app, we used Talk.js. Talk.js is a chat API and JavaScript software development kit which allows real-time messaging between users. The pre-built chat user interface made it possible to integrate with our app quickly and provided all the essential messaging features users would expect. Our app's focus is walks and socializing, which meant a lot of geolocation and map-based features were implemented. We wanted users to be able to see how far they were from each other and suggest walks in which the users could socialize. Postcode.io allowed us to take a user's postcode and get geolocation data from it. This with some utility functions allowed us to work out the distance between users. We also used Google Maps API to render a map and made use of the Google Places API to be able to search for and filter parks in the local area. Geolib allowed us to find the center of two users, which could then be used with the Google Places API to plot and suggest parks at the center point in between the users. I will now pass you back to Leah, who will talk about the challenges we faced during this project. Since this project was carried out remotely, we decided to communicate over Zoom and Slack and regularly merge our work on GitHub with detailed commit messages. In order to keep our spirits up, we also scheduled fun time where we would play quizzes on Kahoot or help with Charlotte's daily crossword puzzle. Learning how to use new technology was also a challenge as we not only had to learn from scratch how to implement it, but make sure it worked with the other new bits of tech we were introducing. The way we approached this was through watching YouTube videos, using Stack Overflow and mobbing when things got a bit tricky. We also had the challenge of effectively planning and prioritizing. So once we had decided our MVP and which features to prioritize, Trello really helped with keeping track of what had been completed. We were working in an agile manner and used our Trello board at the daily stand-up to see what had been completed the day before and assign tasks for the current day. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you all enjoyed our app. It's a goodbye from Charlotte. Goodbye. It's a goodbye from Sam. Goodbye. And it's a goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>